Hi, I'm Mike Schatz with Sherry and Hope, and I'm with Danny Goki. Danny, good to see your face again. Good to see you, Mike. Yep. It's been the, the world has changed since we last saw each other. Uh, I think when we last saw each other, the world was normal. You were running and gunning like, like normal. And, uh, of course, everything has changed since then, hasn't it? It has. I mean, we're in, we're in a type of change that we're going to see in our history books at some point. That's so true. I've been telling that to my – I'm hoping that this history goes by – sooner than later, but it is, it is going to be interesting to talk about for many years, right? Yep. Well, let me tell you, yes. if, you don't know who, if you don't know who Danny is, um, you, you, might have, you might be have slept under a rock for the last number of years, but the guy's been, uh, has had quite a career. It's been fun to watch you, Danny, over the years. You know, Hale's from Wisconsin. He's one of our Wisconsin guys, the cheese curd guys from up, from up north. Um, he's a family man with four kids. We might see them because they're, they've been pent up into, under this quarantine like uh, all of us have. And so they, if we see them, that would be kind of fun. But you burst up back on the scene in 2009 with American Idol. A lot of us know that history. What a, what a tremendous uh, way to thrust you into the world came through that as a top three finalist. You went on to have a, a career from there. You got discovered. I think you were, you, your first career was at, with RCA and country music, which is interesting. I almost forgot yep. about that chapter. You started off in country music. You were first, I think you were the first idol guy that came out of that and into RCA that was into the country music scene. You were in that for a little while, so it, some of us right remember that. But on stage, with some, because of that, you were on stage with some pretty hefty folks, Taylor Swift. Sugarland, some others. Uh, so you, you've, had, you've shared the stage with some, some of those superstars. But the cool thing is then back in something like around 2011, you left country music and you really uh, got into the Christian music world. And man, what a story that's been since then. I mean, that's been fun to watch you as well, to see um, the many you know, Grammy nominations, the Dove Awards, um, the Dove nominations. You know, my favorite is the Caleb Fan Awards. Love when the fans, you know, vote. You've got, I think you've been three-time winner, yeah. that kind of thing. That's a fun thing to see. If that many people vote, male vocus of the year, and then of course a whole a zillion songs that have done top fives and number ones and so forth. So you know, God's given you a heck of a gift there, and it's been fun to see you use it well, from at least from my perspective. So thanks for joining us. For those of you who don't know, that's that's where he's at. So Danny, we're talking today um, with uh, a lot of people. Um, that are going to be in your shoes and my shoes, families that are sitting around in this environment and uh, many struggling. It's a scary time for many, especially if you lost your job. So love having you on the show because uh, one of the reasons we wanted you on this was because you have some perspective on what it takes to get through tough times. And I think um, beyond your music, we'll talk about your music for sure, but some of the questions I want to talk to you today are about really some of those, you know, maybe kind of minister to people to get them like how to give them perspective. But I personally want to know, you know, you know, how, how, how do you cope through this? So let me start with how are you coping? How are you and your family coping in this time as you've been off the road and so forth? What's, what's going on in the Goki family? I mean, we're doing well. I mean, I, you know, when I, I was getting ready, when this all took place, I had hopped on the bus for my spring tour. My spring tour was going to be about four, about 35 shows, 36 shows. And I remember when I got on the bus, I was thinking in my head, like, ah, I wish I could just stay home and rest and be with my family. I'm always on the go. And we drove out to Connecticut, 20 hour drive. And two hours before the show, that show was canceled. Then the entire tour was canceled. So little did I know that that request, uh, that desire was going to be answered. But at the same time, little did I know that I, lose most all my income and it's still yet to be determined uh if there will be any shows left this year there's a lot of you know when we do shows we do shows with promoters and a lot of them have cold feet right now they're wondering if people will want to even buy tickets for shows and so uh part of me thinks that you know shows are still yet to cancel i've probably had about um 60 to 70 shows canceled so far and so it's been a scary it's almost scary in the sense where you lose your whole income in one moment but at the same time you know, you asked us, well, how have we been coping? Well, thank God that we've already been through some tests before we came to this test. And part of those tests were we learned that God was Jehovah Jireh. He was our provider. Before this ever took place, I had a walk by faith. And it's, it's, not, it's not fun. If, if the COVID virus is the first time that you're learning to walk by faith, I mean, that's a crash course. And, um, and I really encourage you to get in your word and allow the word to build you up because um, – this, this, this is going to 
it has the potential to really hurt a lot of people. And, um, but I know that he's my provider. And, you know, you were asking, how do we cope? I think, you know, I read something this morning in my word and it's something that's been in my heart. One of the ways to get through this, and I'm speaking to Christians, which I love, because I can be very candid about this, is to live in an attitude of worship, a spirit of worship. Um, that's a big deal. You know, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. When you get into an attitude of worship, you really start understanding that, that, you, you know, when they say magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name. And you magnify something. Think about what a magnifying glass does. It makes something very insignificant. Well, it makes something that looks small, much bigger. Now, God is not small, but if we are magnifying our problems, it, in our minds, it makes God small. And so when you magnify the Lord, you put that and it, he becomes bigger. You start understanding that your problems are becoming smaller. So one of the things that I've had to brush up on is my daily attitude of worshiping and uh, worshiping the Lord. Um, it's real easy to be distracted, but we have a lot of time home right now. So getting back to that attitude of worship and magnifying who he is it puts things in perspective which is key right now perspective how we look at things can determine whether we get through it and rise above it or whether we crumble underneath it that's really good perspective is that's a that's a great perspective i love that i haven't thought of it that way dan that's really good let me, let, let's take it down to the practical level so you got four kids at home what's your what's the age group with the kids that are at home we have a seven-year-old boy, five-year-old girl, two-year-old boy, and an eight-month-old boy. Okay, so it's it's a full house, man, and it's 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 busy, and and uh, the kids are man. It's all about they need they need mom and dad, so forth. Um, maybe some tips, maybe some tips for those that are out there because we've got a lot of families and sharing hope audience. Anything you're doing and unique that you could pass along and says, here's how we've been able to keep the kids busy and keep ourselves from kind of going a little crazy at the same time. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out, but you know, cause I, I know a lot of parents deal with this. A lot of kids just want to be on electronics. So it's really, and that's not very healthy for kids, you know? And so it's balancing out, like going outside and really for quite honestly, for us parents, I think at least for me and my wife, it's challenging ourselves to like get out of our comfort zone. Cause it's not comfortable, you know? Sometimes pushing kids on swings and playing with them when you rather just be sitting down reading a book or, on your device, but that's been the key. You know, we'll go through the drive through and get ice cream every once in a while. Um, uh, it's really been a having movie nights. We're doing sleepovers in our bedroom. You know, my wife had this idea of doing a sleepover in our bedroom, which I thought was cool. So we blow up an air mattress and we actually, I mean, I love it. I think it's actually really, really a cool idea. That's fun, man. That's good stuff. That reminds me of the old days when, uh, when I was a kid, you know, making the forts out of anything, throw a blanket <laughs> over some chairs, and all of a sudden you had a fort. And so it's almost like we've had to go back about 30 years, it seems like, and just uh, go back to where we didn't have yeah. all these things. That's, that's cool. So those are fun tips. Well, I mentioned one of the things that, um, and you, you kind of went into this. Um, one of the reasons I, I wanted to talk to you as well is that you have – had severe loss in your life. Yeah, that story is yeah. well publicized about your loss of Sophia. And um, yeah. I think a lot of people in this audience, again, I'm sure that with the many people that are, that are around this are, have had loss, significant others. I personally have had that happen in my family. I'd love to get your perspective because coming through that, I know it's been a number of years now, but it, it, some of that stuff, stuff seems like yesterday, no matter when it happened. What, could, what, what kind of th counsel could you give us, th those of us that have gone through some really heavy loss, um, and then maybe at varying stages in the early days and the mid days and as years go on? Just anything you can pass along, I think would be helpful. Yeah, I think one of the keys, you know, that God gave me, and it really was because I was pretty distraught for quite some time when I lost my wife. And Mike, I know you lost your son. And... I mean, these are devastating losses, you know? A key that God gave me was out of Psalm, is it 4610, be still and know that I'm God. And when you look up, be still and know that I'm God, because I remember I was kind of, I was having this tug of war on the inside. Okay, be still and know that I'm God. How's that going to help me? But I knew God was speaking that to me. When you look it up in the Greek, be still and know that I'm God, actually translate into stop fighting with God, stop striving with God let go. And I think one of the definitions of that Hebrew was cause yourself was my favorite one was cause yourself to let go. Meaning 
as a human being, we have the propensity to, in our own mind, with our limited knowledge, think we know more about justice, fairness, and equality, and uh, what God should do and what he shouldn't do than God. And one of the things that he was telling me was cause yourself to let it go. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't let this thing uh, bury you. Mm -hmm. And I... I remember picturing myself back at the funeral where my first wife passed away and when, when God gave me this thought and I literally pictured myself forcing myself, I, this was the image that came in and it was graphic, but I pictured myself as they were burying her at the burial, me being buried with her and me hanging onto the casket and like kind of fighting like, no. And then I pictured in my other hand, I pictured a hammer and saying, I, and I would almost like banging my hand to say, let go. But when I would, in my mind's eye, when I bang this, I spoke this out loud. I refuse to allow this loss to poison my future. I refuse to become a bitter person over this loss. I refuse to give up my destiny because of my anger over this thing. And as I spoke those things, it was an exercise I had to do often because those feelings are going to want to come back and build that that wall between you and God. And it was in letting go that my hands opened up and I was able to find a new day. I was able to find healing because when your hands are like this, you can't you can't take healing. You can't re to receive something from the Father is to put your hands out and to, and to take from him but when your hands are closed and you're almost in a shaking fist mode of god you can't take anything to, that god has so maybe that doesn't work for everyone but i know for myself like when i was able to open up and take that healing i was able, also able to acknowledge that she was a gift like you know mike your son was a gift that you were able to steward for the years you had him and i, I think it's important to know that you know that we did the best we could with what God gave us and ultimately they belong to him before they ever belong to us. And we were the stewards. And, and a lot of times the reason why we do go through these types of maybe not everyone goes through bitterness or anger like I did, but because that's out of focus, the perspective is that we were owed that we're owed this, we're owed that. And then entitlement that kind of is in our culture. It really destroys us underneath without us knowing. So proper placement and proper perspective. So now I thank God that I was able to steward her. That's good, man. That's really, that's, that's, uh, that's powerful stuff. I think the idea that you know, what you said that resonated with me here was that telling yourself over and over yeah. those truths. I mean, it's, yeah. easy, it's easy to not, um, to, you have to, because it, 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 I think in those early days, especially you probably remember, you're almost irrational. You know, this idea that it's, it's such an intense thing that has happened to you that your mind just cannot get it around it. And I think those truths being taught back, because I, I found myself getting super bitter too. And this isn't about me. I wanted to hear your perspective, but I think that's really, really good counsel. And I think if uh, for the audience, as you go through tough times right now, reminding yourself um, who God really is and those promises and things you talked about and just keeping your hands open. Easier said than done, I will say that. You know? And can I just add to that? You know, the Bible talks about those who build their lives on the rock and those who build their lives on a sand. And one thing I've had to reface in my life recently um, was just that, was um, we will find ourselves going around the same mountain if we don't allow the truth of God to transform us and build ourselves on the rock. You know what I mean? And so the, the key to our life is constantly reminding ourselves of the truth because when the tests come, it's going to be harder to stay in. If we weren't in that truth that keeps us free of the jail cell that we put ourselves in, then you got to go revisit that while you're in the jail cell because you usually put yourself there. And so um, really encourage people to allow the truth of God. This is why, when, you know, to be ready for the test because the tests are coming. Mm -hmm. They're super, yeah, absolutely true. And that brings me to actually my next question for you, Danny, is that you started going down this road a little bit in the early parts, but you know, another thing is scary. So certainly huge when you have loss and people are having loss right now with coronavirus and other things and loss is part of life. Um, but the other thing is loss of work and the scariness you talk about before the idea that, I mean, your, your whole world has definitely changed. What does a concert look like of the future? What does the festival look like? I mean, all the things that you're, You've been pondering what promoters are doing these days, but you've had you've had some ups and downs. I mean, you, I mean I'm guessing even changing careers, or coming out of country music into Christian music, there was that moment yeah. of like, okay, what am I doing now? 
can, what can you speak to for people that are going through this? Like, I don't know what's coming and I've lost my job. All I know is I love what you said about this. God's our sustainer, but maybe drill down there a little bit. Any advice you can give people that are in that moment of like, I don't know what I'm going to do for work. I don't know what I'm going to provide for my family. Yeah. And this is for me and I hope it can apply to, cause you know, all of us are different, but you know, the Bible talks about in Hebrews 12, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Uh, Mike, I really do believe that we're in a time of shaking. And I believe that because the thing is, when things are not firm in Christ, it can be shaken. And when you read Hebrews 12 at the end of it, it really makes it clear that, that the things that are not firm will come loose and really fall apart, so to speak. But this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. When God says that, it's not a, it's, it's, it's almost like judgment in a good way. I don't want to call it judgmental because really, um, it's almost like there's this opportunity that we can actually become more fruitful now with this next part of our life than just being busy. I don't know about you, but have you noticed a lot of us were busy? A lot of us were doing things. And, you know, especially in the Christian world, I'm a Christian artist, so we can wrap it up. I'm doing this for the king. Just Jesus wants me to do this. And yet during the whole time, we don't realize that things are coming loose on the inside of us and that uh, we don't even know when sometimes our intentions are, you know, we're keeping up with the Joneses more than we're being fruitful and, and doing what God calls to do. So I've looked at this time of shaking. as like, you know what? This is actually, I'm going to be more fruitful because of this. And for those who don't have provision or means of right now, I, I, I really encourage you to get into your word and, 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 and build your faith up. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Why is faith so important during this time? Because when he says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it will have to do what it says. Essentially, you need faith to build you up so that you can believe God for your next provision. You need, and you, some might say, well, that just sounds so old-fashioned. That's not, this is the word of God. This is the word of God. And right now, if you need to believe, listen, Jesus was able to take, to feed 5,000 men out of two fish and five loaves. You know, when taxes were due, Jesus said, there's a fish down by the river. Um, go pull out the taxes, the money out of its mouth and give it to Caesar, or whoever the, the, the emperor was at the time. This is, a, this is the type of faith that God wants us to walk into because Jesus was not scared. Jesus wasn't. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we. So my advice, and you may call me old fashioned, but this is the God on the truth. Allow the word of God to build your faith. Look at how God provided. And then begin to just say, God, when that faith builds up, you can pray bold prayers like, God, you, you listen, you promised that you would never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Lord, I know that you take everything and work it together for my good. So like, this is not a surprise to you. My next job will be better in maybe even higher pay or better benefits or a happier place to work at because you said in your word, you hold God to that word and, and, and God keeps his word, but it more, it's almost like holding yourself to his word and saying, I actually believe this. I, it, why can I say this so boldly? Because I've seen God do this so many times. When this shaking happened and I lost all my income for the year, I can, you can test my wife, you can ask my manager. I have not been shaken one bit because I'm so firm in who he is. Is it irritating a little bit that I lost those finances? Because I wanted to redo my driveway. I wanted to fix, you know, my pool is broken. I wanted to fix it. We have a foreclosure we bought. I wanted to fix my pool. But you know what? I'm like, you know, this is actually so much better for me because I'm not going to be busy anymore. I'm going to be fruitful and that God is going to make me even more. I'm going to be sharper after this, stronger after this, more anointed, more affected after this. And because I allowed God to shake the things that were loose and that were not fruitful, that were pulling me away from him, that were distracting him, that was distracting my marriage, that was distracting my children. This time of shaking, I've been leaning in and saying, God, not my will, your will be done. And I know that good's coming out of it. Mm, that's really good, man. Two things you said that really resonated that a, a wise faith is, is super important. That's really good. You know, uh, I think uh, taking in the right things and getting that good things in your soul and your mind, that's, that's very smart. I love that. Um, not busy, but fruitful. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a fun one to ponder as well, because I got, we're, we're forced, we're, we're given the opportunity, right? We're given the opportunity to now to get the business out of the way and to, and to invest in what's fruitful. I, I like that a lot, Danny. That's really, really good. Can I, and, and, and that's a, 
the thing might, because what if in our busyness, we were neglecting our families? You know, like, so I'll just give the raw, honest truth. After this happened, I said, you know what, Tony? I said, it seemed up with the Joneses. Whose ticket was more tickets? Who's getting the best ticket prices? Who's filling the seats? And even the church, what church has the most attendance? Which pastors get on their Insta platforms and whatever? And I just said, you know what? This, we all kind of just, I let that seep into us. Not everybody, but a lot of us. And and I was, I was like, you know what? It looked good, but was it really good? Were there families suffering behind it? Were there people suffering? Were people traveling too much? These are all the questions I had to face myself. And that's where I just said, God, I want to be fruitful, not busy. Uh, because the danger in the church is wrapping it up. Well, God wants me to work his work. You know, we can find scripture. We can find verse. We can find all these things to justify it. And then when everything shakes loose and we're freaking out because not as many people are now the, the concerts have canceled and the church seats are empty and now we're like, oh my gosh, what's my purpose? What's my identity? And all along, God's like, see, that needed to be changed. You will be fruitful from this point on. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's so true. And, and that kind of stuff only, I think, happens when there's trials. I think that's, that's the great thing about being shaken or trials or tests. I mean, you, it takes that much usually to shake us up to make change in our life. So that's, yeah. that's a really good word, Danny. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, your, your music a little bit. Um, you know, one of the things that I think... Um, Speaking for me personally, you have an amazing voice. God's given you this tremendous talent. But I think what, in my impression, what makes a great artist, though, is not so much that. That's super helpful. <laughs> but the lyrics of the songs, the songs that you pick to me are often the things. And, and when I lost my son, the lyrics to songs became much more intense. I looked at lyrics differently than I ever had before because I wanted to see – a lot of times whether I really thought those were what God was saying. And I will say without saying names, there's some songs that I've looked, seen that I go, I don't think that's what scripture really says. Mm, wow. with, your, with your words, your lyrics, I went back and I looked and I thought that's, that's on point. It's very helpful. It's very poetic how you do it. And I was, I was looking at, and you know, your tell your heart to beat again, of course was an enormous one for me and still, still is. I know it's one of your most popular, but I was interested when I went to look at, look at the lyrics again the other day. I was looking at one of the YouTube lyric videos. 49 million people have watched that. Wow. Okay. So when I saw that, I thought, cause it's, that's what I said. I said, I was looking at it, not for the, to see what the, the analytics were, but to see what the words were. And then I go, 49 people have looked at that and for some reason have said, that speaks to me. And that's, that to me was the, the power. Again, take another way from your voice and your artistry, but the song, man. That's what made it all. Those lyrics are good. And I've watched your lyrics over the years. So I'd like you to go into, I know that songwriters don't always write every song they do, but, and, and some do, some don't. But talk about your, when you pick songs or write songs, or what is, how do you do that? How do you know what the right song is to sing and, and to put on your records? One of my prayers, and I always pray, and I, I don't, I never not pray this, <laughs> um, is, God, what are you saying? I need melodies from heaven. I need lyrics from you. Um, you know, Tear Your Heart to Begin, Beat Again is actually one of the very few songs I didn't write. And when I heard it for the first time, it was actually when I just got signed to a new record deal. It was my first Christian deal after I lost my country deal. And and I literally just, you know, I walked into the studio and the producer there said, I want to show you this song. And when I heard the song for the first time, I Tear Your Heart to Beat Again, you know, that meant a lot to me because my first wife passed away from a heart condition. And I literally thought, I said, what hap What if my, you know, it was five years, at that time it was 2013, so it was five years after she passed away. And I still just asked God, I said, can you still use my story, even though it's five years old? And even though people have heard it already, an American Idol, they heard it, it's maybe, maybe some people would think it's overdone. And yet I still wanted to see more redemption out of it. And I remember just thinking, you can do that. So when I heard the song, it was actually written a little differently. And I told the producer, I said, I said, I want to make some changes on this song. I said, because it was very, it was very specific at the time. And I wanted to make it to reach a broader audience. And so I asked them to change some lyrics and I gave them some thoughts on how, it, you know, where I thought the direction of the song should go. I said, I just want a broader audience. I want anyone to listen to the song and know that there's a new day, a new beginning. And uh, when I, when I got it back and I sang it, it really resonated with people, but I, I'm always on the lookout for, you know, here's what I learned. If we say what God says, he'll make a way for his word. 
you know, because his word never returns void. Um, and it, I'm not saying we're quoting scripture. You know, if people want to exact scriptures, they can go read the word. And sometimes we do put exact quotes. But as a as an artist and a you know, I guess a, a, we a, we poeticize the words. We try to create these fresh ways, these fresh ideas. And a lot of times they're God inspired, and it's God's word. You know, in in God's thoughts. More than anything, it's God's thoughts mixed into the music. It's God's heart. And when you release that over people, there's an automatic connection because there's nothing, people don't really need to connect with me or, or necessarily want to. They want to connect with the God in me, you know, because Mike, you and I, outside of God, we're nothing. There is, you know, outside of his anointing in our life, you know, the fact that we can talk is a gift from God. The fact that I can actually put a pen to paper is a gift from God. It looks like I'm doing it, but people don't see the invisible quality of God working through me and bestowing on the ability to actually do those gifts. And so I really try to show, you know, we're earthen vessels that show God's glory. And that's how I try to do it with music. That's great. I love to, I love to know the, what's behind the, the guy that's picking the songs that, that makes it all go. I appreciate you giving us a little insight on that. Um, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask what your favorite song is, but that's, that's almost like asking what your favorite child is, you know, some degree, but do you, I guess I'll ask it anyway. Is there one that you actually, cause it could be one that, that maybe isn't, isn't, hasn't been a hit just, but resonated with you yeah. and you, you penned it. Is it. Do you have a favorite? There's a song called new day that I absolutely love that I think people should give it um, a listen to. It's very funky, soulful, very pop and also another song that this is a deep cut it's called undertow and it's a song written for my children okay it's very haunting and it's okay. so it's just like whew. anyways okay. it's off my new album haven't seen it yet so all both right. those songs haven't seen it yet right. undertow. all right well sherry hope audience we'll be looking we'll be looking for those those songs that's awesome thanks for putting that out so let's lighten it up a little bit um um I, i'd love to know because i you know um I've not spent as much time touring, but a lot of behind the stage situations in my career. Um, but any funny things that you could say, the funniest thing that ever happened when you're on the road, on the stage, um, something, because I'm sure there's crazy stuff that happens all the time. And, but to any, anything that stands out that you'd, you'd want to share anyway. I think there's just a few times being on the stage, there's always that opportunity to fall off the stage and, <laughs> or fall on or trip into something on the stage. And that's happened a few times. Um, happened last year where I was doing, I was just dancing to a song and then all of a sudden I didn't see the riser behind me and I just bloop, fell back on it in front of, there must have been like 7,000 people at that show. And I just, you just feel, I just laughed it off and got back up and started singing. Um, yeah, th those are the, uh, having a zipper down during a show and not knowing that's a pretty tough one. And uh, having to turn around and, and while well, you got tons of eyeballs watching you and you got to zip your pants up, it's, uh, it's, there's, there's nowhere to go, terrible. man. There's nowhere to go. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's, and, and, or, or if, go ahead. yeah. Or if there's, so we wear in ear monitors, which they're called ear molds, they mold to the, our ear. And if something changes drastically and you're in the middle of a song, and you can't hear your voice anymore, you can't hear the instruments or something is blaring. Oh man, it is the most self-conscious moment that you'll have on a stage because you got to keep going and you can't stop. And you got to try to work out those problems with your engineer on the side, the, si the monitor engineer. Dude, it's, there's sometimes you're, you're balancing and juggling a lot. Yeah, the, the, fan doesn't, the fan doesn't know all these things that are going on, do we? You're just like, I mean, just the idea of, I mean, how do you keep composure and 5,000 yeah. people sitting there watching you, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, hey, I wanted to also, because um, we, you, when you and I first met, um, we were talking about something that you're involved with, I think that the audience would love to know about, and that's better than I found it. I think that's, um, why don't you talk about what you're doing? Because this, this is a relatively new thing, right? So better than I yes, found it. So I have a, what, what, what is that? Sure. So I have a TV show that, an uh, online series that I'm producing right now, that is called Better Than I Found It. And I'm actually trying to, uh, sorry, I hear people, sometimes I hear footsteps behind me because I got my family here. I'm like, oh man, who's going to show up on camera now? <laughs> um, anyways, um, so I, there's this, uh, where do I even start with this one? This one's such a, one, a big one to bite off. But anyways, um, I, I felt a few years ago, the Lord began to work on my heart and tell me to go back into TV. And I didn't really know what that meant. I just felt this calling to go back into it. 
that was back in 2015. And then in 2016, I ended up getting a pilot for a TV show. And I ended up filming that with my wife and then no one picked it up. And so I was like, man, what's going on? And as I just started praying into it more, God gave me this idea and started telling me what to build. It is called this t television show or online series called Better Than I Found It. Um, many people might not know this about me, but I had an organization called Sophia's Heart where we took in homeless families. And a man gave me, when my first wife passed away, there was a small, uh, we had health insurance through her job. And there was a death benefit included that I didn't know about. It was a small amount of money, but I took it and started an organization. A man gave me a 10,000 square foot facility, excuse me, a 77,000 square foot facility for $10. And I started taking in homeless families. And we, we took in 200 homeless families off the street and we did it for some years. Uh, but one of the struggles I had while I was maintaining this organization, since it was a new venture for me, was trying to raise money and sustain it. It's very costly. And the saddest day of my life is when I had to shut it down. And um, I had to shut it down and I couldn't take it anymore. Homeless families, I felt like a failure. But this is where the vision started crossing with the TV idea. And I wanted, you know, and the idea came up and I was like, what if I find other organizations, people who are like me, other people, like who are the, you know, who are, who are making change in their communities? Who are the Mother Teresas? Who are the, who are the, um, the Martin Luther King Juniors of our day? And how can we tell their stories? And not only that, but then the better than I found it piece is how can we, how can we, sorry about all the noise back there. How can we do the better than I found it piece and find out what they need and resource it so they never have to shut down uh, like I had to do it. And so now we're on this, this, this journey to find stories, tell stories, and then to resource people. And um, we filmed six episodes so far. We're going to have 10 for the whole season. But I believe um, we've already done a lot of great works, but I believe we're going to eventually be shutting. We're going to be, excuse me, we're going to be building orphanages, building hospitals, building um, all kinds of things uh, to resource these people who are making a difference. And one of the secondary platforms of the show is music. And then how do we mix pop culture and social justice? And that's my goal with this online series. Yeah. That's great, Danny. Thanks for letting us know about that. I, I, Danny gave me a chance to see a, a pilot episode of it, and it really is it really is good stuff, and it's really inspiring. I love how it's 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 really showcasing you know these heroes, you know, and you, you do a fine job with this. I think it's going to be good. So I think this audience would this audience especially would really dig that that show. So I'm I'm looking forward to when you kick that thing out in a big way, and and let's see, see what, how God uses it. Well, man, I think that's that's it in terms of this particular time together. And I should, again, I know from on behalf of Sherry and Hope, we love being with you. Thanks for bringing us into your house. And your kids did great, man. We didn't have to. They, they were. I'm sure they were like back there running around, but that's cool. So and and they're you know that's what kids do, man. It's all good. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. Any, Thank uh, you, Mike. Yeah, appreciate seeing you. Say hi to the to everybody in your team, and uh, appreciate you very much. Awesome. Thank you, guys.